What's going on everyone, he's a Malporch here, bringing you guys a little guide video about how you can get your skills raised pretty fast. Uh, this works only with like skills you can cast on yourself, but also there is a way to do combat skills that focus on your enemies as well. I'm going to be showing you that too, but first I want to show you where I'm at because you're going to want to come to this town early on to be able to get your uh, advanced training upgrades as soon as possible. So let me get out of here real quick and get into the world map. Alright, so here we are at Castle Atos, and also I didn't get to show you guys this before, but this is the entire world map right here. And the way you move around between your between uh, points of interest, like different areas, towns, and uh, dungeons and stuff, is you go through the overworld map right here. And then you can pass through towns, choose to enter the areas all you want. Occasionally there will be enemies, you can see other players on here as well. If you run into enemies that appear on the overworld map, it will put you in kind of like a special zone that you wouldn't otherwise be able to access and force you into combat with a bunch of enemies, so be careful about that. But here is the location where you would start at. Solus Bridge, uh, Solus Bridge Outskirts. I'm going to enter that area so I can show you how to get out. If you are needing that information. Alright, so from Solus Bridge Outskirts, the area where you will, you will start out after the tutorial, basically going to arrive on this boat. And you want to follow this road up here. And this is going to take you to the guard outpost. And just keep on going up here. And this is where you're going to enter the guard outpost. And there's going to be like a bunch of quests you can do here starting out. I do recommend doing those because, well, for one, they're going to get you used to combat in this game. And how, like, adventuring throughout the, the different maps works. And you're going to get a, not, a lot of nice experience as well as gold along the way, too. And some good equipment. There's one specific quest that will give you this helmet, Leather Helm of Love plus one, which you can see gives you an 8.5 dexterity boost, as well as a uh, 0.5 combat damage mo modifier. So that's good if you are using dexterity. But you want to come out of town and go west, kind of like northwest up this road here and this is to get out and for reference on the map here is the guard outpost and we are just up here heading to the northwest exit alright but from the Solus Bridge outskirts we're gonna go back Cross this bridge here. Don't worry about crossing into towns. You are not forced to go in. You only go in to towns if you press, or if you click on enter area or press the E button, E key. 
or if you have changed that key, whatever key you changed it to. We're going to go back into Castle Atos here. All right, and now we're going to run back over to where the trainer is. So I'm going to show you all where that is right now. You want to come in and then make a right. This is a uh, Rage Insmersion if you're doing magic. And then straight up the road here is the Adventuring Trainer. This guy is going to be able to give you advanced training into the tier 2 stuff. He may be able to give you tier 3 and beyond. I haven't checked yet because I'm not that far, but he definitely can give you tier 2. And one of the reasons why I am suggesting you do you do this stuff that I'm about to show you is because it's going to help you unlock a lot of good things. Especially if you are playing like a uh, subtlety build, or even if you have like a uh, a moon magic build, which has a lot of cool things in it, like vanish, uh, turn yourself invisible, cocoon of night, shadow form, to allow you to move while you're hidden. Which actually, it doesn't appear that type of uh, ability is in subterfuge, so. If you want an ability that lets you move while being invisible, you are probably going to want to go into Moon Specialization here and work on Vanish, which once you have that to 40, you can get Shadow Form, and that will allow you to move invisible. But here I'm going to show you a good way to get those skills up. Because these are skills that you can cast on yourself, they do not matter um, if you are using them in combat or not. So basically you can go for 7 here, use Camouflage, that's going to get your Sutterfuge. Uh, basically Camouflage is one of the Sutterfuge abilities you want to get up, for like if you want to do Poison Blades. And then, while you are camouflaged, you can still use other abilities. Cast light on yourself. And light is going to give you several different resistances, as well as making it, uh... Well, normally making it possible for you to see in the dark. So let's... Oh, wait a minute, I cast a different thing, didn't I? Celestial Blessing is going to give you the uh, resistances, but that's actually a moon spec. So Light is actually going to give you... Make it to where you can see better, so without using a torch. Gonna put this little magic light over your head. And that's all that does. Um, while you have Light casted, you can use your camouflage ability, and it's going to immediately pull you out of it, but you will still get experience and still be able to increase that skill. Then you want to use night vision. This is going to help increase your moon, but you notice when you go to your moon tree, no skills beyond the, the second tier require your moon to actually be increased, or your uh, night vision. It's the skills before that. So you technically don't need to have night vision on there anymore if you don't want it. It just helps you see in the dark, so... Uh, the ones that I would suggest using is Vanish. And Celestial Blessing for Resistances. You can just cast them over and over, and they're going to keep getting 
uh, experience. And I also recommend doing Healing Touch because that's going to get your healing tree up and you may want that. Just in case you don't have anyone available that can heal you. And as I explained in my first video about the uh, whole beginning experience of this game, you can reach maximum specialization in every skill if you want to with just one character, so. This is actually really helpful to be doing early on. And as for your combat skills, you're gonna notice you have, the, you have these uh, practice dummies. Now the target ones, I, I wonder, can you, you might be able to do melee with them still. Yeah, you can. They're mainly for your, like, your range stuff, but you can do melee if you want. Uh, but you want to come over here, and you see your, your you can get your combat skills up while using them on these dummies. Even if like your combat skill has no effect on the dummy whatsoever, because you have used it on something that the game recognizes as an enemy, your skills are still going up. Fireflies on them. Go to Reckless Stance. Use our healing. While you're in combat, your first bar here cannot be used, so keep that in mind. If there's any skills on here that you want to be able to use in combat, you're gonna need to put them on this bar. Where the sword is. But yeah, if you keep on doing that, you'll eventually get your uh, your skills high enough to where you can get the next tier that you're wanting. And this works with every spec. And it's really good for early on character development. And I just thought it was worth noting. There's probably guides already going over this, but I thought that, that I would show it anyway. But anyways, that's that. If you guys have enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like on it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys on the next one. Later.